Father God in heaven, we come to you right now, God. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for keeping us connected in this time of uncertainty, God. We just say thank you, God, for letting us be on one accord, God, God and we're able to take your word and still bring it out into this world, God. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We pray right now, God, for our world, God, because of the confusion that's going on, and we know that you are not the author of that confusion, God. We just ask you, God, that you you keep us believing, God. Keep us strong in your word, God. That we continue, God, to put our trust in you, God. To put our trust in nothing but you, God. That we continue to come together, God. We continue to learn your word, God. We pray for our children, God. As they learn your word, God. That they hide those words in their hearts, God. And those words stay with them forever, God. And we ask that you direct their path, God, in the way that you want to see them go, God. We just ask for that hedge of protection around them God we ask for that hedge of protection around those that do not know you God we just ask for continued blessings in this world God blessing to those God who don't know you God we continue to pray for them God we continue God to lift them up to you God we pray for health God we pray for those that are going through health issues God that you are the way maker God you are the doctor that you will provide all their needs god let them stay strong god we pray peace god in their minds god because you god you are the healer god and we put our faith in you god we pray for our pastor god we ask you to continue god to direct her in the way that you want to see our church go god we pray for everybody at disciples god we just pray that protection god in these uncertain times we give it to you god we stand firm god right now together god in jesus name amen good morning welcome to our weekly announcements at disciples united methodist church let's stay connected zoom sunday school at 10 a.m meeting id 842-222-34978 sunday worship is at 11 a.m disciples virtual youtube or facebook Want to become a member? Email your name and number to disciplesumcvirtual at gmail.com and someone will contact you. Tuesday prayer line at 7.45 p.m. Call 1602-610-2056. Enter code 427-499. Need prayer? Email your prayer request and name to disciplesumcvirtual at gmail.com to be added to our prayer list. Community prayer, Wednesday, 12 noon, wherever you are, stop and pray. Zoom Bible study, Wednesday, 7 p.m., meeting ID 8740501653. Ties and offering anytime, www.disciplesumchou.org create an account to make it easier to contribute. Special offering, insurance renewal, www.disciplesumchou.org. Select building fund when making a donation. 
social media connections, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Disciples Virtual. Have a blessed week.
today. Oh Lord, we seek your presence now. For in this house today, oh Lord, we know you will somehow heal the broken hearted and you'll set the captives free. Speak a word of life to us that will shape our destiny. So whatever you desire to do in this house today, Lord, have your way, 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 have your way. In this house today, oh Lord, we seek your presence now. For in this house today, oh Lord, we know you will somehow heal the broken hearted and you'll set the captives free. Speak a word of life to us that will shape our destiny. So whatever you desire to do in this house today, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, 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 have your way. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the living God. Today is a good day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I want to call your attention this morning to uh, the uh, Acts of the Apostles, uh, Acts the third chapter, starting at verse 1, reading through verse 10. Amen? Amen. Now, when Peter and John went up to the, together to the temple, at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his undivided attention. He expected to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. So he leaped up. He stood up and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for 
the many blessings that you have restored upon us. And Father God, we ask that you would just continue to be with us, continue to be in this service as we praise your holy name. And Father God, I lift up each and every member of this church, and Father God, I lift our country up to you. I lift this community up, community up to you. And Father, we ask that you would just allow your spirit to continue to dwell in this place, not only in this place, but within this membership and the membership of all churches that are open in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen and praise God. Amen. On um, last week, we, we were reminded of the Great Commission. The command that Jesus gave his disciples that were found in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. And just to refresh our memory, I want to read that again. And, and it reads, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. In today's text, we, we find Peter and John on the move. They are following the commands of Jesus Christ to go. And I'm going to back up and give the title of this message, Receiving the Unexpected. Receiving the unexpected. Okay. Peter and John on the move. The Bible says it was about 3 o'clock when Peter and John went up to the temple in Jerusalem. And know that the early Jewish tradition kept going and until there was some time, even after the church was formed. This was a period of adjustment, a period of transition. And the break with Judaism was not made instant. Christianity comes out of Judaism. And the Jewish holy book is the Torah, which is the Old Testament in the Christian Bible. While the Old Testament of the Bible was based upon uh, the Jewish Torah, the New Testament is about the teaching of Jesus Christ, which is where the two religions split paths. The Jews do not believe that Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of the Messiah and such a ruling over an independent Jewish nation, but Christians believe that Jesus was the Messiah and the Greek translation Christos is where Christianity got its name from. As they approach the temple, they, they saw me carry a crippled beggar to his spot at the gate called Beautiful. The helpless condition of this man had been with him since birth, and it is in contrast to the beauty of the architect of the temple. The man, the lame man, the man that was carried and always given up hope. Hope of everything and any time being cured. So he contented himself to ask for a handout. Instead of looking on this man as a helpless wretch, Peter saw him as one who the mighty power of God made me demonstrate it. After all, Jesus had told him, and assuredly I am with you, even until the end of the age. So they knew that the Spirit of God was with them. Well, church, we ought to know today that 
expected. Peter commands him and he says to the man, look at us. That was not a, intended to attract the man to John or even to himself, but to ensure his island divided attention. Still expecting nothing more than some spare change. This man gave him his attention, and then he heard the words that was both disappointing but yet thrilling to him. As far as a handout, mother was concerned. Peter had nothing to give. But he had something better to give to this beggar. He gave this man not what he wanted or expected, but something that he needed. He received an unexpected gift. By the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he commanded the lame man to rise and to walk up. The crippled beggar asked for money. But he's got legs, glory to God. As Peter helped the man to his feet, the strength of the Bible says the strength flowed into his feet and his ankle bones, and God used Peter as a vessel. Peter helps the man to his feet, and then God performs a miracle. He cures the man, glory to God. We must do what we can. Then God will step up and do what we cannot do. The miracle of healing was immediately. Not gradual, not 24 hours later, but immediately. And he began to walk, he began to jump, he began to leap. And then he went into the temple courts with Peter and John, and all three of them praised God in a mighty, mighty way. That day was a good day for this beggar. Why? Because he received what he needed. Received something that money, money can't buy. This miracle performed in the name of Jesus was a testimony to the people of Israel that the one that they had crucified the one that they had rejected was alive and willing to be their healer and willing to be their savior. The fact that the beggar had laid there daily at the door of the temple made him a familiar sight. Now that he was healed, the miracle performed, the people could then not deny that a mighty miracle had taken place place in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Church Jesus is able. We don't always get to what we want, but know that he gives us what we need. This man was known to come to the door of the temple often. But God's timing it's not our time. He's the on time God. Yes, he is. God is able to heal. He's able to forgive. He provides comfort to his people. He blesses his people. He gives the unexpected gift to his children. He uses us as vessels to do the work of the kingdom and he is our Lord, he is our Savior, he is our Redeemer. He is able to look beyond folks and see needs. For his grace is amazing and his mercy endureth forever. God is. Yes, he is. He is God and you ought to shout hallelujah this morning. You see, we have so many churches all over the world, and, and, and my question today is for not only this church, but for all churches. How do we respond 
when someone comes to us in need. Yes, and again. How do we respond when someone comes to us in need? Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and praise God. Come on, church, and let's bless the Lord. Come on and let's bless the Lord.
It was strength, Lord Jesus, that we will run and tell somebody, that we will go as Jesus commanded the disciples to do, and tell someone of your goodness. But Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, continue to be with us. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen.